Hi, my name's Pete Morrill. We're about deepening canine connections, and um, we're going to do a 30-day experiment. And during this 30-day experiment, we're going to take three puppies, and we're going to spend 30 days with them, five days a week for six weeks. And during that time, you're going to need a few things if you're going to follow along with me and your puppy. First of all, we use snacks a lot, okay? So people ask me all the time what kind of snack I use. I use dog food, but I use a very flat dog food because I fit it in between my fingers. So it really helps, and generally that's not a puppy chow because it's a little bit bigger than puppy chow. So we uh, buy diamond, and they make it a little bit flat like that. And that's the only time we use their food, and it's only for training. Then I always have a couple boxes of training food. You can put them in Ziploc bags or whatever. So then I have a snack bag. This snack bag can fit right on my side, and <coughs> so I can have snacks at any time. If my dogs are really spending too much time going after me, then I'm going to put the snack bag inside my pocket and open it up because sometimes, but I'm also going to teach them that they can't steal snacks from me. I'm going to have a leash. Believe it or not, this leash was bought at the dollar store, so it costs a dollar. So it doesn't have to be a fancy leash. Some of you want to get $15 leashes, that's fine. This one is a dollar. <coughs> I'm going to have a whistle. This is a Roy Gonya whistle, and if you listen to it, it's a very high-pitched whistle with no um, P in it, and that's going to make it sound different than the soccer uh, team that's playing down the street or the basketball team or whomever. I'm going to have some balls for playing, um, and we'll introduce those later. Um, I'm going to have a little Ziploc bag for just anything that I need. Sometimes if I need to pick up some poop or something like that, I can stick it in my Ziploc bag. Okay, I'm also going to put a nice sturdy collar on my dog. This is a collar. If you're getting a puppy from us and that puppy is eight weeks old, you want uh, eight by um, 12 inch adjustable collar. And that'll fit every puppy that's eight weeks old. It's adjustable. These are our Marble Mountain Kennel collars. And we would suggest that if you get your collar, you get your name and phone number put on the collar so if your puppy gets lost he can make it back home. You're going to need a crate. Um, if you want to get a crate for your dog when it um, is at full weight it's going to be 50 to 70 pounds if it's a lab from us um, and it's going to start out as a 5 to 10 pound um, lab. So we use smaller crates and then graduate but if you want to get your big size crate because you don't want to buy two crates then I would encourage you to get a milk carton like this, put the milk carton in half of the crate so the puppy has to sleep in half the crate. Because if a puppy's sleeping in about this size of place, it is less likely to want to relieve itself in one corner and sleep in the other corner. These crates, I have two different kinds of crates. I have one with bedding. This is a crate that I would put my puppy in at night. We use straw for bedding. You could use wood chips. You could use uh, uh, newspaper, shred it up, whatever you want to use. Um, but generally, when your puppy first comes home and you're not sure it's going to sleep through the night, you want it in one that's got some sort of absorbent bedding. This is a crate that I would use for training. The reason is you'll learn that my dog's cue off of the noise that it hears that little noise. You can't get that noise when you've got the bedding in it. So this is a good one for training. But even better for training, we train in half crates. So a half crate is just the lid taken off of this. But we've found that if you go to Tractor Supply or someplace like that, they have uh, these type of deals, which are meant for mixing cement. If you've got a small project around your house, but it's a very durable plastic crate and it seems like the bottom of a crate. In other words, for us, it's an imitation bottom. The puppy's 
step in it, the puppies step out, it's really obvious. And the main thing is it's durable and I don't have to buy a whole crate to do that. Tractor Supply or any hardware store would carry that. Then we're gonna have a variety of different types of mats. So your puppy will be very comfortable on a nice fluffy pillow like this. Um, so we're gonna have probably in our house, we're gonna have two to three pillows. They can be different kinds, different colors, whatever. Um, and then we're gonna have something like this. This is the liner for a big crate. And I like it this size. It wouldn't have to be quite this big, but when the puppy gets full grown, it'll fit on this size. But what I like about these is I can take them with me in my car. And so if I want my puppy to be in its spot, I can um, take it, it's very small, and then I get to wherever I want, and now I can define for the puppy where that spot is. So these are the basic things that you would want to start the super citizen training with. Non-negotiables, you're going to need a crate, you're going to need a pillow, you're probably going to need a half crate, you're going to need a whistle, you're going to need food, um, and some sort of food pouch. Um, something to clean up after your puppy. Um, we like to have toys and a ball is our favorite toy. A uh, tennis ball is a favorite toy. And then some side of unique sounding whistle. All right, those are the things that you need to start the super citizen training with me at Marble Mountain Kennels. We're about deepening canine connections.